Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's Live Wire. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Abby Minasali, and I am the Engagement Marketing Manager here at SignalWire. And of course, we will be uh, joined by Brian West uh, in just a moment here. Uh, we're very excited to share how our AI driven solutions are going to be able to streamline your communications. And then we're going to be taking a deep dive into how exactly to get a digital employee to work for your specific use case. And we're actually going to take a, a deep dive into that and figure out how to do it step by step. Um, but before we begin, I do have a few housekeeping notes for all of you. Uh, so this live wire is currently being recorded, say hi to the camera, uh, and it will be made available to all of you after this presentation. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions, lots of questions. You can use the chat in the bottom right corner and either Brian will answer your question live during this, this webinar or somebody on our support team will answer your question. Like reactions or thoughts here. Um, we also have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of this webinar, so if you want to save your questions for that, that's fine too, uh, where Brian can answer your questions uh, in front of everybody. Our support team is also in this channel currently, and they will stick around after this presentation. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask them, just let us know. We have more virtual rooms. You can go chat and talk more about your specific use case. Last housekeeping announcement, we have a conference, a live in-person IRL conference coming up in August. It is called ClueCon, and it is a conference for, devel for developers by developers, and it's centered around all things communication. So if you like what you see in this live wire and you'd like to see more of it, you can go to ClueCon.com. And we're actually accepting speaking submissions right now. So if you are interested in an opportunity to do something to at least. Hi, uh, to speak in front of a technical audience, please submit that. We're always looking for new faces um, and it doesn't have to be a highly technical talk. Uh, it's just a, a very technical audience. So if that interests you, again, cluecon.com. Uh, before I hand you over to Brian, though, I want to take a look with all of you at why leveling up our communications is so important. So why we are deciding to throw this live wire, why we're all here today, why we're all so excited about AI, right? Because it's more than just a trend. Um, and I've got some data to back that up. Uh, according to a Gartner report, Data from various conversational AI vendors actually showed that the volume of interactions handled by conversational agents has increased by as much as 250% over multiple industries. Uh, chatbots also currently represent the top use of AI in enterprises and their adoption rates are expected to almost double over the next two to five years. Uh, so what this shows us is that AI may be new as a trend, but the data shows that it's already being widely adopted and it's quickly becoming the standard for those who have access to this technology. And that's something that we don't want to get left behind on because these reports are both, if you notice, from 2020. It's four years ago. So um, it was already being adopted four years ago. As you can see, everybody's talking about it. It's, it's being adopted even more now. Um, if we look at this chart, you can see that 40% of contact leaders believe that customers should always have easy or instant access to a live phone agent for all issues. Wrong chart. <laughs> Um, so having a live phone agent for all issues sounds like an impossible task, right? Like people want access to multiple ways of communicating with you and your business at all times. But having a live agent 24 seven is pricey and time consuming. An AI agent, on the other hand, can be available to help at all hours of the day and they can free up employee time so that employees can focus their efforts on more productive tasks. Um, the AI, for example, could even send receptionist summaries of these conversations so that uh, everybody can make sure that the tasks are being completed and handled properly, if not. 
Uh, of course, we're here to talk about phone systems. So the thing to think about when customers are picking up the phone is that is oftentimes the very first point of contact that that customer is having with your business. And usually if somebody's calling, it's not just to say hi, they usually call when they need help, right? Which can be a very vulnerable experience. They're having an issue and they need it solved. Uh, so making a good impression in that moment is critical. Uh, making a good impression is so powerful, in fact, that 90%, 96% of customers say that customer service is important in their choice of loyalty to a brand. And 77% of consumers say that inefficient customer experiences actually detract from their quality of life, which I don't know about you, but that sounds a little bit dramatic to me, but the data doesn't lie. Uh, we've all been in that position. You call, you're needing help, and you get stuck in a phone loop. And no matter how hard you try, you just can't get through to anybody who can actually solve your problem. Uh, this is so powerful, in fact, that an improved customer experience can increase company revenue by 10 to 15 percent. While following a poor customer experience, up to 89 percent of consumers have switched over to a competitor. So oftentimes we're so focused on making sure our products are great as engineers, which is which is excellent. But we have to consider the fact that the people using these products, if they need help and aren't able to access it, they're willing to walk away. Even if they have a frustrating experience, that's enough to turn them off completely from your business. So we want to make sure that we're not turning away people right at the door, right? We want them to come in. Um, and lastly, around 90% of companies mentioned faster complaint resolution and over 80% reported increased call volume processing using conversational AI solutions. And that's according to uh, an MIT survey. So this isn't just something that we're using in theory. This is uh, not as new technology as you would think it is. It's just starting now to become accessible to more people, which is our goal here at SignalWire is to help make this really complicated technology accessible to everybody and not just these big conglomerates or huge industry companies who have the resources to af afford complicated technology. Um, because we know that this works. We know that it improves revenue. We know that it improves customer experience and it helps create more efficient workflows. Um, so now that we know it works and we know that it's important and, it, and we know that it's accessible to us, Let's hand it over. I, I've got Brian. I've got Brian up here. We've got um, Anthony Minasali in here as well. So if you have any questions, this is the perfect time to ask. Um, and let's hand, hand it over to Brian. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, I know we've done some demonstrations of how to do some some basic things with our AI agent on past live wires. I think one of the biggest ones is like a receptionist for your office. Those are great examples of taking a task and, and handing it to an AI agent. For example, we use a, our AI agent here at SignalWire to answer our phone. And her name is Sia, and she collects data. And when she's done, she opens a ticket in GitHub, or uh, not GitHub, but in Zendesk for support. So support uses that information to follow up. Uh, if, if they need immediate help, she can transfer them as well. So it, it's what I'm going to show you today is a couple of things. What we've built here at SignalWire is what I, it's a turnkey solution. We've brought everything on board that you're going to need to build an application to interface with, say, your CRM, uh, with, with any other API that's out there. For example, like the one I do for Zendesk in ours that we've deployed here at SignalWire, she has direct access to that and opens that ticket and, and does those tasks. Uh, so I'm going to show you some shortcuts on that here. Has anybody here built something on conversational AI currently with voice? Just go ahead and raise your hand with a little hand raise at the bottom so we can kind of get a feel for that and we'll move on. Um, so what we have here at SignalBotWire is a scalable solution. You don't have to be paying a set fee to have X number of agents. You're not paying. If they're not talking, they're not costing you any money. They're available, like Abby said, 24-7, 365, come rain, come shine. Uh, they don't call in sick. They don't catch the flu. Uh, those are the things that you have available to you. Um, it's, it's fully integrated with our other, other technologies, such as sending SMS, transferring phone calls, uh, things of that nature. 
You also have configurable interruptions so that you can tweak and tune how you want your AI agent interruptions and, and, and response latencies to be. It's very, very low. It, it's very much kind of like the binars on Star Trek sometimes, how fast it can turn around and answer your question. And it's very, very human-like. We also have the concepts of uh, conversational fillers, things like, for example, if the AI agent needs to run a function, you can fill out uh, details of what it's going to do in that situation. Like, one moment, please, especially if it has to look up something out of your CRM. In addition, with the way that we have this configured, uh, you're able to, before the call is even answered, you can dynamically dip your CRM, customize your AI prompt to greet the user, such as, hi, John, I see you have a ticket open, ticket number, blah, 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 which was updated five minutes ago. Would you like me to read the latest update? Like those are the types of things that you can code into what our AI agents capable of. Uh, so what I'm going to show you today is we've we've put together a small demonstration of this, so that I can uh, I'm going to put the link to this in the chat. This is a document that we wrote up that's got some how tos in it, and then I'm going to share my screen and kind of show you how I've put it together. So I've gotten this put together in two different manners, and one is going to be under the hood, and one's going to be from our UI. So give me just a second here. Let's see here. All right, so I've put together this phone number and I'm gonna map it to an AI agent I built from our UI. So this is, this is this AI agent that I've put together. Her name is Vicky and she's a virtual assistant and I've given her a function. So what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna make a phone call to this and we're gonna show this off. Let me get that number because I and then we're going to show the back side of this as well. Hello, I'm Vicky, a virtual assistant. How can I assist you today? Um, what's up, brother? Special teams, special plays, special players. Is there anything else you can help me with today, Vicky? Is there anything specific you would like assistance with today? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out. Have a great day. Goodbye. And this is an example of one I built. Half of it is in the UI and half of it is in a back-end system that I wrote, which we're fixing to show off. Uh, as you recognize, those are 11 Labs voices. So we have a, the premium voices available on our platform as well. So we've brought those to you so you could have a more realistic interaction. Now, what we're going to do here is based on the how-to I put in the, in, the, in the side there, I've put together this, this raw Swimmel script of what, uh, you know, what that AI agent is, all right? And then I'm going to, we save that, and then we're gonna remap our phone number to that one so we can just process that raw Swimmel. So we're gonna say Swimmel script, Vicky, save okay now i'm going to stop sharing this screen because i got to share another one for you to really grok this next step let me find it here let me find that one window is that it there it is all right so i'm going to run this application and we're calling basically the same agent, but you're going to notice something a little bit different here. Hello, I'm Vicki, a virtual assistant. May I ask for your first name? Brian. Hello, Brian. How can I assist you today? What's up, brother? Just a second. Special teams, special plays, special players. Special plays, special players. All right, what day is it? Hold on. Today is Wednesday, May 08, 2024. How can I assist you further? That'll be it, thank you. 
All right, so what I'm showing you here is, let me get my arrow keys fixed. Okay, so what this does is <clears throat> this did a, an API call using the SignalWire AI gateway. So if you notice here, when I asked it, what's up, brother? It called my function, what's up? Posted all of this data you see here. And I gave it the argument of the phone number, which I really didn't need that for this function. This is just to demonstrate how you feed data back to the AI agent to get it to respond. So for example, you could be looking up a ticket number in a ticketing system, and it could be asking for the ticket number and passing ticket number and that and into here. All I did here was response, tell the user special team, special players, special players. And it, it did exactly that. Now, if I wanted to give additional data, like a larger chunk of instructions, this, this would allow you to just put it all in there. It, this is basically what it's going to use to answer the user's query. And if, if does anybody have any questions about this so far? Awesome, awesome. Let me go over here and find my other thing I need to get because I want to I want to demonstrate something else here. And you kind of got to see the raw swimmel that we did, but I'm going to pull it up here into the terminal so we can actually look at it. Okay. So as you see, I've defined these functions here. You know, what's up? Uh, when, when when the user asks, what's up, brother? If you notice, I didn't tell it in the prompt anything about how to use these functions. Now, this is one key thing that I see a lot of people struggle with. And the best example I can tell you, if I hand you a hammer and a nail, and then I ask you to hang a photo on the wall, you would infer that you would use the hammer and nail to hang the picture up. The AI, our AI agent is that that way as well. If you define your purpose of your functions correctly, and all your arguments. You can even come down here and define some of these as required or optional when you define them. Now, this is just raw swimmel that I'm showing you uh, because this is the under the hood look at how this all fits together. So that AI agent we just called really had nothing more than this text prompt to guide it. Hello, I'm Vicky, a virtual assistant. And when I said, what's up, brother, it run the what's up function with the argument of my phone number. And then when I did the what day, when the user asks what day it is, uh, it runs that function and, and returns whatever you return in the response value. Uh, so this response data here that you see that I've done here, that's how you feed. So see, I didn't have a handler for that function when it when it called, so no handler for what's day. Uh, so that's, you know, I had an error in that one, but definitely uh, the function purpose is critical. Um, does anybody have any questions at this moment? I, it looks like the team is already answering your questions. Uh, and and it, again, if anybody has um, anything that they want to have specific after this call, by all means, you can click the help button in the upper right hand corner of your space. And I'm going to show you that right now. So we can go over that. And I'm going to do a bunch of these little segments like this that show the basics. But right here, if you click this and go to support portal in the upper right hand corner, you can open up a ticket or you can even use the chat down here to open up a ticket. It'll even help guide you through the documentation on your specific questions. Um, all right. Is there any other questions we have? Also, I'm going to hint on something Devin just said. There is, uh, there's, there's also things we can do with our prompting. Like if you want to train your AI agent to do a more complex task, there's options and there is a guide. If you go to developer.signalwire.com, click guides. Uh, there's an AI section over context switching. And there's also a best practices guide that kind of gives you some overviews of what to do and how to do prompting. Uh, also, it gives you some kind of understanding about turning turnaround and endpointing. Uh, that that is how fast it can respond to a user's input, and kind of gives you kind of how that all works, uh, how to draft a prompt, uh, things of that nature to help you get started with the AI agent. 
And I, this was just like a very, very minimal under the hood look that I showed here. Uh, you know, I, you, we could do dynamic swimmel. You can get more complex with your functions. We even have, uh, you can do serverless functions with our AI agent and do our, using our data map. Uh, so the AI itself can call REST APIs and form responses without having to prop up a server. Uh, that is also uh, a little bit more complex to do, but is, uh, is very powerful. You don't have to prop up services to serve your swimmel. Let's see here. You can also, for example, like function arguments. I think a lot of us, when we're working with like databases and CRM systems, like you're querying for date ranges or ticket numbers or things of that nature, you can define your like your argument as date time in PGSQL format, or you could even do in STRF time format and give it exactly what you want. And it's it's free to do all of that. There is a to the Santa Claus tutorial tutorial uh, Kim that we have on the guides is a great example of calling functions with uh, the data map and allowing the AI to be serverless. That was that was a demo that Devin worked on for Christmas with Anthony, and that's a great example of that. There's some complexities in there that I am working to get documented. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, just open a ticket or let us know. In addition, uh, I think Stephen, Nick answered your question about the specific guide for like MFA. Uh, there is, there's a concept of, of metadata in our AI agent, and that is demonstrated in one of our digital employees that's in our digital employee repo. It's currently written in Perl, but we're working to get some of these things written in Python and Node uh, so that, that you know, other people can grok exactly, because not everybody knows Perl, and that's okay. Um, but we got a bunch of examples that me and the team have put together in that repo. Uh, they've given you the link. We did a page for TadHack. 2024 that outlines a lot of these. Also, some hints I will give anybody working with the AI agent. Um, humanize it. Give it a name. Talk about it like it's a human. Because I've noticed programmers approach it like they have to code it. It's basically show it how to do it versus tell it how to do it. Uh, it, it's very easy to get stuck into that mindset. I want it to do this specific thing versus describing how you want it to do the task. And it's capable of some very complex tasks. For example, uh, we have a roomy serve bot that does room service orders. Uh, we did Bobby's table. If you go to Bobby's table.ai, this is a restaurant reservation system we wrote. The whole back end system for that is on uh, the digital employees repo as well. Uh, in addition, Bobby's table has a uh, Google business page with some quite comical reviews on it. Uh, so, you know, give it, a, give it a shot, give it a call. Those demos are up and running. Um, it actually did ensnare a real reservation from a real person. Uh, she called, made a reservation, called, canceled it, and then called to talk to the manager. So now I have to go back and write a Karen AI for Bobby's Table restaurant. So we're going to have to have a manager there that, that Bobby can transfer them to. Any other questions? There's one, Brian asked, what's a low hanging fruit that they can handle with AI? Like what's a simple use case essentially? Okay, so the really fun ones are like after hours answering service. Like we're, for example, the we have an example in a digital employees, Thermal Thrillers, which was a, re, every one of the demos you see in that digital employees repo was a result of my direct interaction with something. And the one about the HVAC after hours, I had my air conditioner went out. I called the after hours number. It was the worst experience I've ever had with a, a live human answering the phone and still just not getting it right. And so that night, I, while I, my air conditioner didn't work and I couldn't sleep, I wrote up a, a whole system. And basically, it's an AI agent that can collect the, are you a customer? Uh, do you have a service contract? Is it under warranty? How old is it? What's its make and model? Uh, are you the property owner? If you're not, can I get the property owner's phone number? Uh, you know, what, are, what is your address? And I even have a version of that that does Google address validation that we're going to put in uh, for the actual demo. So if you give your, what my ultimate goal is, I'm going to integrate it with DocuPost. So when you call our demo of after hours HVAC, you will actually get a postcard in the mail from the fake HVAC company with uh, 
like a discount code or something, just thanking you for calling and using our AI. Um, that's that's literally one of the demos that I'm going to expand upon in the next month or two. And that's the AI doing all of those steps itself and not you having to do them. Well, the 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 pricing is is fair uh, considering we've brought everything on board. Uh, very soon you'll have a new one. Uh, for example, if you want to do uh, things are related to uh, like vector databases, we'll have that available as an API. Uh, so you can upload, say, a PDF of what you want your AI agent to be able to answer questions on, and it can be integrated with two clicks of a mouse and off it goes. Uh, and you can make your AI agent more contextually aware of what it's doing and how to answer those questions. You can also, we could hook you up with sales. If you have large volume, uh, we, could, we could have a conversation with the sales team as well. Uh, we also have resources available to anybody that wants to develop on this. If you need some guidance, there's avenues for us to assist you to jumpstart your progress. Uh, me and my team are very good at that step. So we're, we're able to answer your questions and get you on the right track. And as Abby pointed out, I don't see what, this is not what I would see as like people need to worry about it taking their job. It's allowing your current humans to focus on more complex things that are revenue impacting versus some of the more menial things like collecting data, taking notes on the phone, uh, you know, those types of interactions that can, if, if you're, if your head's down and focused on an issue and you're having to answer the phone too, you could, that just throws off your entire flow and having the AI front end that helps you stay focused on something that you need to complete versus getting a perpetual interruption throughout the day. And, and our AI, AI agent can actually like, who you, who do you want to be connected to and actually transfer the caller specifically to where they need to go. Or if it's after hours, it can take all the information you instructed to collect, like what's your name, what's your contact number, or like, for example, it could say, I have your, your number you're calling from as 555-1212. Is that correct? Or do we need to use a different number? It can do all of those things. And it's very in, instructional, just text, text prompting. And it's pretty easy to do. Yeah, as Lynn's pointed out, it's a great compliment for current staff. Yeah, for example, it, you could get really creative too, since we're having a discussion. Um, you could send, for example, the transcripts of sales calls, um, have those automatically send to product teams, for example, or um, summaries of calls to your receptionist so that um, their job over the phone is now monitoring things and talking to customers who actually need one-on-one -on -one help instead of answering the phone for people who have basic questions um, that can be solved easily by AI. And then of course, if they need to get through to a person, making it really easy for them to get through to a person, because we all know that no matter how good this stuff gets, it's never going to completely replace Correct. having a face-to-face -face conversation. It's important to make that accessible to people. I also want to address something CJ brought up. Can AI agent integrate with Whisper ASR? Well, Whisper ASR that's available in the cloud today is not real time. So no, it can't. And you can't integrate currently with any other language model. Every other language model out there is not competent enough to run functions. So, and we've tried, we've tried them all. It just won't. And for us to deliver you a product that's reliable, there has to be some some rigidity there in those types of things but we do have options uh for various services that work really well uh if there are specific needs for example if there's a language since our ai agent is multilingual you could have it being able to speak three different languages but for example if you one of the languages is not supported by our default asr engine that we go to it will it will correctly dictate which one it needs to use for those languages and switch to them. For example, you could have English, Spanish, and French, and you could start speaking to the AI agent in French, and it'll just switch to French. And if you use the multilingual voices from, say, 11 labs, uh, the voice doesn't change.
We can't, there are ways for us to do the HIPAA and PCI compliance components. Uh, there's also a potential, I pointed out this about um, metadata. There are aspects of what you do. There are areas where you don't want to give the language model data. So if you don't want to give it, you know, private information that it could possibly leak, you can stash that away in the metadata sec uh, section of the AI agent while it's running. And the language model never sees it. But every time one of your functions gets called, you can access that additional data and act on it programmatically versus giving the AI agent every bit of the details. Because you only want to give the AI agent what it needs to do its task. For example, it, one that we do in the Zen example is um, we do a verify customer and it gives us the customer's account number and the PIN number in our function. We verify and validate that. We set all the customer record into the metadata. And then all we tell the language model is proceed to help the customer. They're verified. Because the language model doesn't need to know anything other than that and to proceed. In addition, you get all of the, the post prompt. If you set a post prompt URL and a, and a post prompt, you get the entire summary of the entire conversation, every function that was called. It's a big JSON object that you can you can ingest. You also have the option of getting that data on every function call as well. We also have an additional question about using SIP messaging for this API, which the answer I believe is no there. No, there is, you can do a SIP call into our platform to an AI agent, but there is no SIP messaging API for it, no. Um, so our AI agent, uh, so we've got, we've got speech recognition, we've got text to speech and we've got the language model tokens in and tokens out. So as it's listening to you, those are, tur that's turned into text and fed real time into the language model. When the endpointing is complete, the, the language model responds that gets fed into the TTS, which generates the response. And that's what you hear. So all of these, these three things are happening in real time on our platform. Yes, Kim, per our conversation yesterday, we'll have a call and we can, we can set up kind of like what that looks like. Our team can get you started there. Um, and yes, the digital receptionist is that's, that's an easy one. We've done live wires over that before. Uh, there's blogs on that as well. And we'll be sure to link those from the page that this is on so you can get those. Yes, a 30 second call is also 25 cents. Probably worth to add that our um, billing is always done by the minute. So even if you're under a minute, you're still going to get billed for the minute. No, th th there's a general dis you know, misconception about using AI and voices for outbound calls. Um, if you have an existing business relationship with somebody, you can use it. The, the key differentiator is deception. If you're doing deceptive things, that's where you're crossing the line. But if you have uh, relationships with people like appointment reminders, and you want to do, you know, use these things, uh, that that's perfectly legal. And those are valid use cases. But like cold calling a 1000 numbers to try to sell them something, that's where you're you're going to have a little bit of a problem that's still regulated the same as the do not call uh, and spam spam calling and things like that. Uh, but don't deceive. And that's, that's the big differentiator on, on the whole thing. And, and I would stay away from political stuff until they figure that out, because that's, that is a messy quagmire right now. Because people have been fined using uh, generated voices that were deceptive, that were deceiving people. So, you know, that's that deception component that you have to steer clear of.
Any other questions? <clears throat> UK and EU phone numbers to use with AI anytime soon. Well, the fun part is we do have a bring your own carrier option. So you can bring your own uh, DIDs to our platform and bring them in however you see fit. We're already within the regions of the, of the EU, so it would already be local. And Anthony, if you're not watching, Anthony's answering some really good questions in the chat as well. It's like I said in the beginning, it's a it's a turnkey. Everything's on board. You don't have to go build this infrastructure to, to do functions. It's just there. It's like a it's kind of like CGI where you can you can post data, get data. Kim, on the AI, the regulation on 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 uh, outgoing is basically you can use a voice, just don't use it in a deceptive manner. Uh, like I said, if you had a business relationship with somebody or they requested a phone call from your company, that's a perfectly good use case uh, that that is perfectly legal. What is what is active pieces? that a vector database go oh, look i have not heard of that one like zapier is what they said oh uh, if it it probably isn't fast enough like zapier is not fast enough for you to be able to to it's got to be sub millisecond to to get the data you you don't want to sit there and wait you know 10 seconds for a response there's an example that we we did for flows flower 2 that is in our digital uh, repo that uses an open AI key to generate the flowers on demand and to do the Dolly API call as a 10 second call. So we built a feature in called uh, wait file that lets you play. So when it's built, when it's making the image for uh, the flowers you requested, you could make any flower you want, dragon flowers, phone flowers, database flowers, the thing would just dream them all up. And while it's doing that, all you hear is like paper folding in a box being packed until the flowers are sent. We have one person asking how to bring your own carrier. Um, we do have the ability to port in, uh, bring your own carrier. I'll find the guide for that and paste in chat. Yeah, there's a BYOC guide if you could, you get that. It, you don't port in in that case. You just set up a domain app. Oh, Nick A already got it. Good job. I think everybody on our support team is eager to help y'all. Uh, we've spent really good time making sure uh, the DevX team here, Devin and August, have been working with me really good to get the docs polished up. Uh, if you, you go through the guide, we have a whole environment called Wirestarter that we're starting to base some of our how-tos on that gives you a Docker container to get up and running with an example in, in just a couple of commands. Uh, we The first usage of this was during our TAD hack hackathon. We had people up and running in less than two hours, building products and solutions using our AI agent. Can it detect phone number spoofing? That is not the AI. AI is not responsible for that. That is, you can rely on MFA, uh, but soon you should be able to get access to the, like the stir shaken. Uh, you could also, uh, if you're dynamically generating your swimmel and answering the request for the swimmel, you could dip any database you want and do that prior to even sending it to an AI agent. So you're not wasting money sending bum calls to your AI agent. Uh, and that's probably the next topic I'm going to be doing is generating dynamic swimmel for AI agent. Yeah, we do have we do have APIs for checking for phone numbers and getting the data. <clears throat> 
but Stephen, using MFA, we have an MFA API that we used in the MFA bot that you could use as well. Any other questions? Anything you guys would like us to see covered in the next uh, live wire? I think I want to cover dynamic swimmel in a couple of those areas. Ticketing integration. I could show you how we did the Zendesk one. That would be a good talk as well. Um, there's a couple of ways of, of what we do here, Stephen. Uh, in the post prompt, there's a couple of things I do. For example, in the bot we have working at SignalWire, Sia, she uses the post prompt to send me an MMS with a summary of the phone call and the call recording. So every time somebody calls SignalWire, I get that. In addition, in that, in that hook, we, uh, we open up the Zendesk ticket. We put in the link to the actual log and I, and, and it shows that, let me show you something here, kind of what a log looks like. Cause I don't think anybody's seen that. And I'm going to share that real quick just to kind of give you guys a, a view of that. Okay, so as, uh, as we said, you get the full log of the conversation. And this is just my representation that I put together of this. And you can see it called a function to get the weather in Orlando and gave me the information and then hung up the call. So that's also information you get. I, I could probably roll that with the uh, dynamic swimmel and, and do the next one on both of those. All right, any other questions? It looks like we might be good, Brian. No other questions. Thank you, everyone. And also, if you guys want to actually talk to me one on one, I'm going to give you my Kalindi link. And by all means, I, I want you guys to use it. Find it here for you. You can book some time one on one with me. And I'll put it in chat down here for you guys. So I, I think some of you that are here today, we've talked some that are here today, we're going to be talking tomorrow. Uh, so if, if anybody here wants to schedule some time with me, just let me know. And the link is right there. Pick something that's available on my calendar. Uh, me and my team will be, uh, ready to help.